A Rhetorical Question by K. Moon Winters. Where were you on November 22nd, 1963? Most anyone alive at the time can tell you, save for me. Oh, I know I was in Dallas, the city of my birth, and in the state of Texas, and on the planet Earth. But where I was when shots rang out on that fateful day, is a puzzle I still ponder and a truth I cannot say. All I know for certain, the singular thing I recall was the world was now diminished and shrouded in a pall. Up till then, I had been a typical teen of the times, looking for the reasons and listening for the rhymes. In bobby socks and loafers and hair and bouffant flip, though hardly square, I'd hardly dare proclaim myself as hip. What I was was a liberal, an idealist. That was me. But then what choice did I have raised at my father's knee? He was the quintessential Texan, tall in his Stetson hat, who instilled in me equality for all, and that was that grown up in a home that was built on democracy, a happy place where any race felt comfortable to be. At three years old, I sat upon my father's shoulders strong, passing flyers to the crowds, politicking all day long. I hardly took much notice when I came home from school of the likes of Barbara Jordan or Jim Wright or Senator Mike McCool or LBJ or Henry B. or Ralph or any other, though sometimes I'd listen to them laughing with my mother. The one I do remember, though, up until that fateful day, was the one I met in Washington. We called him JFK. At 12 years old, I stood in awe as he shook my hand and felt at once the power he held at his command. His smile conveyed sincerity and through a child's pure eye, I looked into his soul and knew all the reasons why my father worked so hard for him as well so many others and how at last we all could be truly sisters and brothers. Fast forward to the future, I am sweet 16 the apple of my father's eye, a budding teenage queen, certain of my future, as well my destiny, on November 22nd, 1963. I awakened to a morning. Electricity filled the air. They let us all skip school that day. The teachers didn't care. My mom and dad had long been gone to places the president would be, and if at all possible, my dad had promised me that he would call and let me know if I could meet him just one more time. And here's the part where I lost the reason to the rhyme. Where I went from that point on, I... I simply cannot tell, nor will I let myself believe what I perceived was hell. From awakening that morning, the next thing that I knew was driving up to my house as my brother and parents did too. A surreal scene then followed my father. So straight and strong was doubled up in agony as my mother helped him along. Inside the house, the phone, it rang reporters, supporters, and friends. But here is where my story of Camelot now ends. On a day I can't remember, yet still, haunts my memory. It was November 22nd, 1963.